Michael K. You know, I'm behind the scenes making sure to just get pushed out, but you know, of course, YouTube doing their thing, so I'm countering that. But, um, Christopher Williams, thank you for becoming a member. I'll see you everyone in the chat. I didn't get a chance to have my YouTube meeting yet, so they're blocking, they're still blocking the feathers. But, um, my moderators look like they're, and shout out to the moderators holding it down. Look like they're doing their thing. And, um, allowing the feathers to be seen. I got a YouTube meeting coming up. We're going to talk about, you know, we're going to talk about that and see if we can work something out on that. And uh, we'll go from there. So we're about to get started right in a few, in two minutes. <laughs> we're about to get started right after this. Look, hundred years at the hundred years, they done lied to us about this and that. Told us all we from Africa and made fiction characters turn into facts. Hurry it up and then it was not. No goddamn well that trick was capped. My wife and I wrote a book about it and it's book with knowledge, evidence, and fact. My other book got them haters shook because it's helping my people take a closer look. Had their backgrounds in the background, show my people where they post a look. Show my people where they get it from, where they hit it from, all sorts of angles. When it comes to this research, you must please first don't trust strangers. Find out not all of your own is what I highly recommend and suggest. And if you're looking for uncensored content by me, I highly recommend you the best. Which is my website at the link you see just across the screen. Don't let it miss you. I make it simple. I double down on that black and white. It's too official. Alright, I'll see you everyone. Shout out to my wife for bringing my coffee upstairs. Hey, can y'all hear me? Is it the mic sound good? Is it is it okay? Do I need to turn that up some more? Or are we good? Are we good to go? I'll see you, sister Bethy. I see you. Alabama need you. I'll see you. Levante, I appreciate you, brother. O.C.O. 
A new me trying to put up her feathers and is blocking it. Thunder Bear in the building. Goldie Seven in the building. Oh man, that just jumped. Uh, Love Leah, Oco. James Stone, Oco. Michelle Curry. Y'all can hear me, right? We good? Yeah, it's we gonna have to work on that. I mean, since they blocking the feathers, y'all. I mean, if y'all can throw up the arrows, that'd be that'd be great. Okay, my wife just sent me a text, let me know that she can hear me. That's excellent. Okay. Louisiana in the building. Yeah, throw that bow and arrow up. Let them know we here. Let them know we here, baby. <laughs> Let them know we here, baby. Um. Yeah, man. I mean, they can hate all they want, you know, but <laughs> we know who we are. You can get upset all you want, but we know who we are. We making real changes. And this is what I want to get into guys. Um, and Thunderbird, thank you for becoming a member. Now there are a few things being directed my way when it comes to, uh, people are asking me to join, uh, what is it? it it's, it's something like, um, clubhouse. It's very similar, but it's on Twitter now. Now, and okay, let me explain what's going on here. Now, for some odd reason, a group of, I don't know if they're all, you know, I don't know if they're authentic Africans or what, I don't know what's going on. I haven't spoke with them. And honestly, I don't really care, but I just want to bring this up because it's not everybody. And I want to make that perfectly clear. This particular group of people that probably have been paid to promote, uh, confusion okay that's on these uh this thing like clubhouse that's on twitter that's not the outlook i i can't speak for them but i'm not interested in that and they're creating a rumor stating that i'm against africans and that's the same thing that the pan africans was doing which is weird to me okay just because see i think y'all getting mad because we know what happened to us here Okay, now once again, let me make this perfectly clear. I have nothing against an authentic African, but I'm gonna tell you right now, near stranger or near foreigner is gonna be able to tell me what happened to my people. I, that's just not happening, regardless if you don't like it or not. I mean, or what? I, no, <laughs> no, thank you. Um, and no, we're not the same people. I don't have no family members out in Africa none so and that africa diaspora stuff all that talk that ain't got nothing to do with me or my family and probably nobody that's watching and a lot of us that are here and have been here indigenously before y'all foreigners got over here and keep in mind the africans that came came late later 1900s later prior to that it was so-called Caribbeans, you know, of the West Indies going back and forth from here. And that's even called America, South America to be exact. I don't know what the confusion is, but maybe, maybe the authentic Africans are pissed off at you pan Africans claiming that you're African. Okay. When you can't even stay the tribe of where you from. You just go off of the stories that you read up on Google somewhere and say, no, I'm, I'm Igbo or what well, you just pick one. And then it sounds like to me, the majority of the authentic Africans that are coming out, trying to say something, they sound Nigerian. Okay. I mean, what was your landmass called before it was colonized and renamed Nigeria? If you would like me to go into that, I mean, keep in mind, that was three areas that was renamed, were put together. 
by way of uh, colonization and renamed t to be Nigeria. Now I have a lot of Nigerian friends that I can welcome on my platform and they'll be able to tell you this story. Cause it's your story. So you don't gotta take it from me cause technically I will be considered a foreigner. This is the reason why my focus on my information, you know, that I put out on my channel is mainly for the United States. Okay, because I have no right to be speaking about somebody else's history when I'm not there. Just like you have no reason to tell me about my family when you weren't here. It works the same way. Can't no stranger tell you any different. Regardless if you in your feelings or not, I don't know why y'all in y'all feelings, but once again, I have authentic Africans that know me, okay? That know who I am and know what I represent. And I ain't got nothing against them. They ain't got nothing against me. Now, if it's somebody that's coming out the side of their neck about me, they just don't know nothing or don't know me well enough. And they confusing me for Tariq Nasheed. You know, I, and y'all gotta, and see Tariq, you gotta stop doing that. Now, I don't know which, cause you still hiding or holding on to the coattails of Pan-Africanism. You need to stop that too, Tariq. You can't sit up there and say aboriginals and black and all of this, and then turn right around and say, everybody came from Africa. That's confusing. Stop doing that. Like you miss, like for real, for real, like you look like a scam artist to me. I'm gonna call you out on that. You not being authentic with what you talking about. You, you going, you putting all the stories together and it still don't make sense. I'm gonna call you out on that. And I, and I think you deserve that. I think a lot of people are not talking about that. I am going to tell you, you got it wrong. None of my people came from Africa. We were not brought over here on slave ships because slave ships never existed. I told you it did exist. Skiffs, wherries, rowboats, steamboats, and then cargo ships. The cargo ships ain't come into the 1800s. And then it didn't come into, I'm talking about on a larger commercial scale into the 1850s. So what do you think they're gonna bring 12.5 million? That's the number that they originally used. 12.5 million enslaved Africans from Africa on a, on, on a, uh, uh, not a steamboat, on a um, cargo ship in 10 years, in a 10 year span? Because remember, it was outlawed allegedly in 1863, 1865. And then I want anybody right now to tell me how many white folks it took to get that done. Why are they not in the museum? Who are the captains of these ships? And y'all clinging on to the slavery thing, like that's it. Like our history start next, but no, <laughs> no. Our history does not start at slavery. Stop letting these foreigners fool you. You know what's upsetting? Me looking at y'all being lazy. Like you think everything got to come to you so easy. Like, well, if I can't pull it up in Google and it don't say it in Wikipedia, then it's not true. And you should see the people that work for Google and work for the CEO. I showed you that the CEO, the founder of Wikipedia came out on video, told you, he said straight up, don't trust anything on Wikipedia. I showed you that and yet you still gonna trust it and then you trust strangers which are like here's another thing some not all some of y'all um south africans no excuse me not south africans south americans are coming over here mixing with our people and you also mixing up the story you know y'all always want to push it back to africa not one of y'all been to africa if you did, you was visiting. You wasn't living there. You don't have family there. You can't tell nobody that's been here indigenously, indigenously from day one where they came from. You have no right to do so. Nope, not no white folk. Nobody can tell me 
personally where my family came from nobody and that's how it's got to be for all of y'all and then they cause the confusion look and you want the division there it go here go the division right there that's complete total separation now we are now i'm sure that we could consider those african they're not even called out the white folks was called africans i showed you that still to this very day they're called afrikaners their tongue their native tongue is called afrikaans they live in south africa this is still to this day wake up this is right now these are white folks trying to take you off of your land that's what i'm trying to embed in your head we got shit to do and it's not no going out marching and going to this damn government looking for a handout yvette carnell stop that you ain't nothing but a political democrat just like the rest of them name a democrat or republican right now that did anything for our people i wait and don't you dare say martin luther king because as soon as martin luther king changed what was he coming after now when we come to washington we're coming to get our check now that's the first thing you're gonna think about but what was he saying before that through an act of congress our government was giving away millions of acres of land throughout the west and the midwest which meant that it was willing to undergird the white peasants from europe with an economic floor not only did they receive the land they built land grand colleges with government money to teach them how to farm not only that they provided county agents to further their expertise in farming this is martin luther king this is the reason why they killed them hello hello and you're worried about identities with africa africa ain't got nothing to do with you why did malcolm x die why did martin luther king die huh was it because they was claiming africa no they died as soon as they said because they got a following as soon as they said listen this government owe us that's when they took them out Malcolm X said man let me calm down right here I I because I, I did this it does y'all it does it frustrates me that my people fall into the same trap year after year it's not all of y'all though don't get me wrong. I see the people that's willing to do something that's actually doing it. But when you're trying to create a scheme and, oh, oh come on, y'all, let's build up a school and let's build up a museum. Like, stop that. What is that going to do? What is that proving? Nothing. You're still calling yourself black right now. And you're going to fight tooth to nail for that. Warned you and showed you government records that that term means that you're dead in this government. It's a status, a social construct. That's not even being politically correct. We don't have to follow by their rules. What the hell is your problem? They made our ancestors think that they could have got something out of this government. How did they do that, Dane? They went to the children and fed them this idea. And what I mean by children, I mean those college students and they 
late 1950s and early 1960s and force fed them that BS, bad sociology, and told them that no, if y'all end up becoming uh, voters, you may become first class citizens. Those college students, I showed you this, God damn it! Those college students' parents told them not to do that. They was going to lose everything, including their houses, their jobs, their businesses, their land, God damn it! What more do you need to see? Why do we need to march down to this government when we create our, we can simply create our own. Right now, we don't need nobody, you understand me? Nobody. We are the resources. That's why these foreigners keep coming here. That's why. That's why they keep us divided. That's why it's us. Wake up. Renaming us left and right. It's us. Look, look. What can? Okay, Dane, calm down. But I swear to look at this. What is it that you? Why? Why are you so blind? They put this on us purposely. And do you want to turn around and start ag arguing with authentic Africans? They going to shut up as soon as you see it, as soon as you become a warrior again. You know what the man for? Oh, oh, wait a minute. Dane Callow is actually, they going to straighten up. I'm going to walk with my brother. Immediately. No if, ass, or bust about it. You stand up for what's yours right now, they gonna change the script. And you gotta look at what's going on in the movies, for example. In the movies, they giving movies, uh, characters that's supposed to be of American descent to foreigners that look like you and I. As soon as you go to an interview for that person, they speaking a totally different language. Or they speaking with a foreign accent. No bull. Y'all not paying attention. Yeah, they gonna have our back, but give them something that they gonna have our back for. Give them something. To be quite real with you, them Africans mad because you claiming on to their culture. You culture vulture, stop it. Stop it. And we let these foreigners come over here and take our identities. Listen, we don't gotta be called American Indians, but that's what this government referred to us as by way of paperwork. And then they changed it multiple times so you won't trace it. That's even still to this day. What did Obama take away? The term Negro. Why? So you can't trace it with colored. So you can't trace colored with Indian. Right now, your birth certificate blank. And you know what you gonna say? Well, they might have made a mistake and you don't know why. Nobody else has been reclassified more than us by this government, yet all the white people gotta do is click white. Huh, listen, all the white people gotta do is click white. How many times we gotta go over this? And see, and I blame y'all people over 50 because y'all are so little-minded, not all of y'all. Not all of y'all, there's some, there's some folks out there that's over 50 that's not. 
Shout out to y'all. I'm talking to the ones that need to get choked up with this knowledge. Right now. So stuck in that world of believing, you still in the matrix. And then you got the nerve to call yourself woke. That's played out. You still sleep. And you sleeping with the fishes. As we speak, you stink. Get away from me. And you got these authentic Africans laughing at us because we just separating our people. That's why I said don't put me where a leader with this so-called conscious, they con artists. Every single person out there in that, as far as leadership, con artists, all of them. They frauds, all of them. They frauds. I don't want to be next to them. I'm higher than them because my ancestors put me higher than them. Even with YouTube doing my, doing my, uh, the shadow banning right now. But I, I swear to God, as soon as I do something like Kevin Samuels, my channel will jump sky high. All they want our people to do is coon all day long. drama that's all they gonna promote see and that's division that's complete separation that's why i said this ain't got nothing to do with no africans nothing this is about us and we need to start chopping some heads because it's our own people that help these foreigners put us in this position and that's historically speaking, too. No cap. I'm not willing. That's the truth. See? Y'all ran over there and voted for Obama just because of his skin complexion. And he took the term Negro off the records. And gave billions away to foreigners. Steve, uh, Steve Coakley, shout out, may he rest in peace. That's the only, my matter, no, it's a couple of real ones, but that's another real one. May he rest in peace. Forewarned you. He forewarned you about these secret societies that was started by white folks, but they put the blacks up front, so-called. I'm using that terminology so you can see where I'm coming from. If you need Dane, what should we call ourselves? Niji, I told you. Niji. You want to refer to your people, your peers, Niji. That's well known on top of that. That's not nothing made up. I showed you where it came from. That's recognized already right now. Niji. When it comes to this government, refer to yourself as American Indian, not native. I told you why. I told you why you need to stop calling yourself native. Because native applies to anybody. Indigenous people, you can say that too. Niji is us. Native Americans are foreigners. You heard what I said? I know you did. I don't even got to repeat it. Let me sit this tea, y'all. Hold on. Let me sit this tea. You heard what I said. They continuous, this is a cycle. This ain't nothing new. We just gotta stop the cycle. And it's not hard. Just like I told you, this research may seem like it's hard, but it's not. That's you being lazy. But you know what some of you would do? Listen to the preacher after they hand you one book and tell you, listen, don't need no more books. That's the truth right there. You gonna run for it. Just imagine your enemy doing the same thing. Handing you one book and saying, no, listen, that's the truth, and you run for it. Mm -mm. Come on, they 
think about it. How did the preachers get the Bibles? They told you that. And remember the stories, we ain't even got to say that this is true or not, but the story said that they were given to you in school was that our ancestors were uh, banned from reading and writing. So how do you know about the Bible so good? And that fast on top of that. Y'all got to listen to that. Every single one of them churches work for the government. Hands down. Now, now once again, I'm going to tell y'all, some of those people got good people in there and they have no clue. I spoke at multiple churches already. Spoke to multiple priests, pastors, ministers. They know the truth. Some of them, very few. But a lot of them in there for the money. Right now. Selling you out. Just like the con artists that they hold up as leaders. The Jesse Jacksons, the Al Sharptons. Well, all of a sudden, they popping out of nowhere every time something happened. And then on top of that, it's only specific times. Things that they could, you know, do politically that's going to help them sell a book, maybe. Sell a newspaper. Sell a new grassroots campaign. <laughs> like Black Lives Matter. We already know where that came from. We don't need nothing. See, when they go in the state, and what I'm going to say earlier, I'm actually glad that I thought about this. What I was trying to say earlier is that Steve Coakley was informing us that our people can't do anything politically. Once they get involved in this government, they're going to make sure that you follow by what they're going to do before they even get down to thinking about you speaking for yourself or what you would like to do. You got to follow by that creed top to bottom. Ain't no if, ass, or bust about it. At that time, Steve Coakley called that white supremacy. See, and the reason why I say white supremacy is an illusion is not because it doesn't exist. It's because it doesn't have to exist. But we allowing it. Like right now, I'm sure a lot of you watched the NF, uh, the uh, Super Bowl. You allowing white supremacy. These these white billionaires going to get rich. Oh, for you watching their television program, it's all scripted. And their commercials. And no, come on, y'all brag about the halftime show because they finally got some black folks on there that did a good one. That's all they're going to remember. Meanwhile, the rich billionaires back there, skin complexion, pale as pale, made cash money off of your ignorance. They do it all the time. But, okay, what if you clicked your television off? What if all, now they're going to say that we between 47 to 53 million. What if all 47 to 53 million of us that probably been at that same number since 2012, there's way more of us than them, but they're going to lie. But what if all of us didn't cut our television on? What if all of our people come up out of their damn league and started our own? You want to make some changes, you got to make it happen for yourself. That's the reason why I respect brothers like Ice Cube, because he created his own league with little to no money. And people backed him, but our people not supporting him just because of his skin complexion. Meanwhile, them rich white billionaires like, <laughs> yeah, they gonna eat it up. They gonna eat, and you are. That's exactly what you're doing. That goes for the NBA also. Nay, I dare you to name a, a, a I'm talking about a 100% owner that's indigenous to this land, that's a, an owner of one of them NBA teams. I'll wait. How long we gonna wait for that? When I see them fighting just to have coaches, <laughs> like, come on, bruh. They not for you to be higher than them. So why do we need to, see this, this goes back to the original problem. Why did we need to be desegregated? 
that when that caused all the confusion in the first place. That's the reason why they started that campaign with the children, because the children could be easily manipulated. Just like in school now, they was forcing our children right now, still to this day, to get indoctrinated by strangers right now. They start with the children. We as adults got to make the change. I'm not getting on y'all, but we got to make the changes. We can start up our now. Now, now I'm not talking about no, oh, come on, y'all. Give me 250,000 and disappear. No school pop up. We ain't talking about the Umar Johnsons. We talking about we can create multiple schools with less money, with our own money. It don't got to just be given to one person. We can put it in a pool right now and say, we're going to put, we're going to buy this amount of land right there and put our multiple schools right there in each city. And I mean, excuse me, in each state. We don't need no, we got the resources right now, y'all. Everybody that come over here banking on our money. Banking on it right now. Look at it. Every single time you listen to a rap song, what are they promoting? Foreigners. I got the Gucci this to fit the, the pride of the foreigners are getting rich off of us. Shit, look who running the rap game. I'm talking about the record companies. And we did this to ourselves, y'all. We can't just be like, yeah, the white man did it. No, you did it to yourself. They gonna get there and get fat pockets off of your ignorance until you ready to make a change. And all our people doing is being masters of entertainment and arts. We were master back in the day, we were masters of agriculture. This is the reason why they was trying to push us out. That's what Martin Luther King was talking about. When, when he said they provided county agents to further the expertise in farming, guess who that was? It surely wasn't the white folks. Why? Because they just got here. Same thing with the foreigners. That also goes to show you that we've been here. We taught them how to farm. Only a person that's indigenous to this land is gonna know how to grow anything in this land. Period. And the slaves that did come, that was allegedly stolen, were kidnapped. They were children. They still doing it right now. <laughs> Y'all ain't catching on yet. Remember when I told you it was the children back then? It's the children now. Right now! That's the only time you can manipulate somebody is when they're young. And I don't want you to be like, damn, you speaking the truth, you speaking facts, but, but what we gonna do? What I told you what we gonna do? Don't ever ask me that again. I tell you each and every time. We gonna get our lands back. And the foreigners that wanna stay gonna have to pay a price because we are the landlords. Otherwise, here go an eviction notice. You got less than 30 days. You got 30 seconds. Watch. Watch. Changes are happening. It's the reason why they gotta make more confusion happen. Right now, trying to separate our cousins from us. Notice I said cousins, distant cousins. I say that, but you gotta understand that not all skin folk is kin folk. 
Because and what I mean by that is, is even deeper. Because just because we share the same hue of complexion doesn't mean that that person is going to have their best interests for both of us. They're not going to have our best interests in mind. You got to be careful with that. Like it's a whole rack of these people that's on YouTube and other places that talk a good game, but all they doing is feeding their pockets, getting rich off your ignorance. They not doing nothing for real. They've been saying the same shit for years, flipping the script. Pan-Africans, that's mainly what they are. And the, the real authentic Africans probably mad because of that. Like, like yo, we y'all not us. And they been saying that. Y'all not us. We just we not the same. Yeah, we share the same hue sometimes, but y'all not us. And then y'all think y'all doing something because you're going to go visit a couple places. Nigga, you coming back to America to live. And those that go to Africa, you don't hear nothing else from them. Because they got to adapt to their culture, which really ain't all good neither. It's not all peaches and cream. I'm worried about home, the motherland, here. We could deal with Africa in a second. Matter of fact, they got their own stuff going on. Their own people need to worry about themselves. Real talk. That's real talk. Now, if you African or whatever you are, and you came from a different area and live here, just know if you want to help us out, you got to help us out the right way. Not by redirecting us and putting our mind on different land masses that we didn't come from, historically. If you want to do something, sit down, shut up, and learn. Listen to what the issues are so we can correct them. Here, not nowhere else. Once we correct, every, it's going to be a domino effect once they, they waiting on us, everybody. Everybody waiting on us. I remember they took off videos from Vladimir Putin that used to be on YouTube years ago. Where Vladimir Putin was trying to, he was talking directly to us. I'm talking about the so-called, listen, I'm not even going to say all that no more. They, they were talking to the, he was talking to the Niji. Hands down. Straight up. They took them videos. Oh, they took a lot of his videos off where he just used to go live. And for one is what this government was doing to us. That was back in 2014, 2000. Some of y'all may remember that. And he was giving big messages out for warning us. Now look at him now, scared of Russia. They have been scared of Russia and China. They have China's ass right now. And you think this government worried about you? I showed y'all that message that <laughs> the Biden administration came out and said, look, if y'all American and in Ukraine, y'all better get out of there. Because we ain't going to do nothing to help you. Basically, they not going to help you. You got 420, 20, they said 24 to 48 hours to get up out of there. Otherwise, we can't help you if Russia invade. They don't care. <laughs> So why should you? We got to band together. The government band together with the other governments. We got to band together and create our own form of government. Period. Uh, that ain't the, the, the business that they got going on over there ain't got nothing to do with us. That ain't got nothing to do with us. And, but you still want to help the colonizers go colonize some more land? Like, what? And yet we still ain't correct the problem with what they did to our people to take this one? But you want to go help them some more, huh? Silly? Ain't that silly? <laughs> like, really? I'm going to listen, listen, watch this. In today's society of America, 
The descendants of so-called American slaves have been advocating for reparations from the government ever since the tail end of the Civil War in 1865. But the government chose to ignore their demands as if they hold no validity when publicly verifiable evidence proves it to be true. One example is Union Major General William Sherman issuing Special Field Order No. 15 on January 16, 1865, which ordered that land confiscated from Confederate state landowners be divided up into 40-acre portions and then distributed to newly emancipated Negro families similar to how the government assisted incoming foreigners from other continents of the world ever since the 1840s. But this order was a... Hold on. Let me fix this. I don't know why I look like that. Okay. Okay. Immediately eradicated once President Abraham Lincoln was assassinated on April 14, 1865, and Andrew Johnson was then elevated as the new U.S. president. Then all of that land was given to foreigners from other parts of the world instead that just so happened to be welcomed here as immigrants in America that were hoping to ultimately undergo the process of gaining citizenship status with the federal government by way of being employed and obeying all government national laws, bills, statutes, and contracts. Now, this issue was brought to the attention of Congress ever since by numerous men and women who knew that they were entitled to their lands and demanded that pensions should also be included for their successful works, which was literally creating, building, and cultivating America from the ground up into what it is today. And that's not an exaggeration. And they still not listening. Year after year, this issue was brushed to the side by the government and each presidential administration that moves into the White House continuously ignores it, whether Democrat or Republican. In the year 1989, which was 124 years after Special Field Order No. 15 was issued, Representative John Conyers introduced a bill labeled H.R. 40. And if this bill was passed, it would only allow for the creation of a study commission to study slavery and discrimination in the United States and then study potential reparation proposals for restitution. And just this bill alone is being ignored. Yep, a study into the issues surrounding the aftermath of early unjust labor in the United States is being ignored still to this very day by the government. Now, remember, um, now, I mean, still to this very day, but they hurried up and that uh, Stop Asian Hate, um, and, all, and, and, and they got all those gay rights about, uh, everybody got their rights quickly. Quickly. And HR 40 was just a study to what this government did to us, and they still to this day, 2022, are ignoring it. Everybody else got rights. The foreigners. But yet, y'all still know we're going to vote this person in. Vote that person in. It's going to change, y'all. Hold on. Wait. We got to get Trump. Then y'all going to put it on Trump. I mean, come on. What? Look what happened to JFK. We don't got to get nobody. We just got to get ourselves together. That's it. We got to take command. Thank you, Jay Jones, self-government. We got to take the lead. Stop 
stop listening to 40s, 50s, 60s, 70 year olds. Let's keep telling you we gotta get into this government. No, we don't. No, we don't. This government know what they did. They are responsible for what happened to our families in the past. And they don't want you to do anything to change what they got going on because it's fattening their pockets. And they still helping incoming foreigners only. But yet, no, no, Dane is a fraud. Dane is this, he don't know what he talking about. <laughs> If you were in front of me, I'd slap you upside your head. <laughs> Wake up! This indicates that the government does not care about biting the hands that fed them historically. But when it comes to foreigners or immigrants seeking asylum in the U.S., the government then jumps to their every need. And we are still. Look, look, look at the picture. Tell me, do you see anybody that's indigenous to sit in this picture? Look who's smiling. Look who getting your rights. This is not no hate. This is the truth. This is the truth. I don't got no reason to hate nobody else. For what? They getting this? They getting this? This is our people's fault. Seeing examples of this form of favoritism displayed by the government today. For example, just this past October of 2021, Joe Biden's administration, the Justice Department, the Department of Health and Human Services, and the Department of Homeland Security were reportedly planning to give $450,000 to each adult and child of immigrant families who were separated at the border under the Trump administration. Just stop for a second, y'all. Just don't, just somebody, some, somebody, anybody. Explain that to me. How is the Trump administration, how, how is the government considering $450,000 per person? to each immigrant adult and child just because they got separated at the border. Well, what happened to the little stories they was giving us? Saying that when our so-called family members got captured and brought over here and separated at the border. I'm done. was separated at the border under the Trump administration. According to reports from the Wall Street Journal, the payments would be made to settle lawsuits brought by the American Civil Liberties Union, representing those families, in which they were originally asking for $3.4 million per family, but Biden's administration countered with a $450,000 per person payout. Attorney for the Listen, American Civil Liberties Union. 
Now, I, like I said, I said before that I'm going to take a case up to them because we've been discriminated. We've been discriminated against since day one. I just want to see if they going to come to this government and sue them on our behalf, just like how they doing for these foreigners. They asked for 3.4 million. You can look this up. If you don't believe me, good. Write it down. And I dare you to look it up. I want them to do the same thing for us. And if they don't, you know what's up. ACLU said in the statement that, quote, the Biden administration is correct to provide relief to the children and families affected by the government's horrific practice of family separation. The suffering is something they will always live with, and it is a deep moral stain on our country. We need to make it right. I, I, it's a deep moral stain on our country. Something they will always live with. Listen to that. They talk about foreigners. We need to make it right. And this includes not simply any monetary support, but also a path to remain here. And this includes not simply any monetary support, but also a path to remain here. This is what is right and fair. Can, can, I, can somebody tell me in the chat right now, is this right and fair? Is this right and fair? This is the lawyer, y'all, of the ACLU telling this to the Biden administration. Like, I swear, like the foreigners got more rights than us. Is this right and fair? No, it's not. It's not. And we letting it happen? But, and we wanna kill our brothers and sisters in the street? They want you to do that. Why you think they controlling hip hop? They want you to hurry up and kill yourselves. The more, the less of you, the better. That's why they continuously bringing foreigners over here because there's too many of us to handle. I hope you heard me on that note. In quote. Now, keep in mind that the Republicans are obviously against this payout. However, they are only advocating for the payout's amount to be adjusted due to the possibility of the payout's current amount attracting more immigrants and accelerating their plans to cross the border. But either way you put it, the government is literally giving reparations to immigrants and has been doing so ever since immigrants have been crossing the border seeking asylum, no matter their skin complexion. I mean, to the point where they're even exempt from standard immigration policies still today, as long as they use the cold phrase, I am here seeking asylum. The University of Texas at Austin, Department of History, states, quote, as early as 1917, immigration law had exempted asylum seekers from general immigration restrictions. I'm gonna let this right here sink in. They exempted asylum seekers from general immigration restrictions. Remember when a couple of people was asking the um, Biden administration and them, like, are those people that are coming over here being tested, you know, for you know who? Like, no, well, and they trying to hurry up and bypass that question. They are exempted. They are exempt from immigration restrictions. The general ones. All they got to do is say, I'm over here seeking asylum. You don't believe me? Good. Look it up. 
I dare you! You gonna get this work! End quote. So can you blame them for migrating here? Absolutely not. Because who wouldn't want to live in the best countries in the world where their needs are immediately met with the opportunity to empower themselves and their families for years to come by gaining federally allotted lands to farm and feed their families and be gracefully compensated for even migrating here to begin with. And let's not forget how you'll be labeled as white by the U.S. Census, no matter your skin complexion, so that you may enjoy the privileges, civil rights, and all the other benefits granted by way of the government, but from the fruits of the indigenous people's labors, who wants this government to do more than just act as if they are attempting to create a study commission to study the effects of what really happened here during America's founding. So is this capitalism, prejudice, racism, and favoritism all wrapped up in one? Or is it just the government ignoring the blacks? That was fire. Hun. Hun, baby, please, can y'all, can you bring me up two waters upstairs? I'm out of water. <laughs> I'm gonna need some water. I, I, look, I'm gonna need some water. <laughs> Man, come on, y'all. Listen to that. You make kind of a provocative comment in your new book here, Mug, and I think it's on page 151. You write that um, various groups, feminists, gay rights groups, and, and those who are defending immigrants have commandeered the black civil rights experience. Yes. What do you mean by that? Yes, I'm glad you asked that because I think it's one of the most important points of the book. I mean, I think what the way liberals um, have treated blacks like children and many of their policies have been harmful to blacks, at least they got the beneficiary group right. We do have to, I mean, we shouldn't there is the legacy of slavery and Jim Crow laws. We don't owe the homeless. We don't owe feminists. We don't owe women who are desirous of having abortions, but that's, or, or gays who want to get married to one another. That's what civil rights has become for much of the left. The immigrant they dropped rights the flags after rights? five minutes. Immigrant rights are not civil rights? Um, no, I think civil rights are for blacks. See, that, this is essentially the problem, and the Republicans what did, don't, wait, don't, can don't I just understand. Say, what have we done to the immigrants? We owe black people something. We have a legacy of slavery. Immigrants haven't even been in this country. But you see, most of us are either immigrants or are the descendants of immigrants. And well, we another continent. Uh-oh. Did they take me offline? Oh, no. Did they take me offline? Not right there. All right. Am I off? They took me offline? It's saying that I'm offline. Wait, can y'all? Okay, hold on. There you go. Hold on. Wait, are we back? Oh, let me find out. <laughs> I struck a nerve. I struck a nerve. Huh? Huh? And then they get mad when all we doing is pointing out their wrongs. They get mad. They getting mad, huh? Huh? And shout out to this lady. I forgot her name. The lady that I just played. Shout out to her. Because she knew. She knew right then and there. And y'all, y'all could probably say her name in the chat. I forgot her name because she was promo at that uh uh on this during this newscast she was pro uh, promoting her book keep in mind i told y'all all the politicians gonna be speaking up when they promote their book 
but she told the truth right there. Yeah, and hold on, that went so fast. Uh, how you pronounce the last name? I don't want to get it wrong. But they saying it in the chat. Yeah, but shout out to her. I don't want to say her last name wrong. I want to respect that because she told the absolute truth. Coulter and Coulter. Is that how you pronounce it? She told the absolute truth. Anytime I, you know, get somebody's last name wrong and stuff like that during my documentaries, I'm doing it purposely. Like when I say W.E.B. DuBose, I know it's Dubois. I'm doing it purposely because he he's he betrayed us. That's a that's like, you know, like Eminem kneeling at the NFL. <laughs> that's the same thing. But I'm not going to disrespect this lady right here. She told the absolute truth. Like I said, I'm not against white or so-called white folks or so-called Caucasians that's going to speak the truth. If you got the balls to call him out, call him out. I'm with you, brother. I'm with you, sister. She told the truth. That guy right there said, well, not everyone. I mean, there are Native Americans. She, she straight up said they immigrated from another continent. Hands down. Even the Native Americans know they not. Listen, they got like that was brand, that was brand new. I showed you that that was brand new. 1970s. And then she also told you that the immigrants just got, I mean, the immigrants just got here just got here and they handed them left and right handing them everything and this was all of our all of our land period we are and listen y'all we this is the reason why it's so important because at one point we were children and we were being indoctrinated inside of these schools uncritically we couldn't say nothing we couldn't question nothing now we adults we got a big responsibility to take Turtle Island back. You got to understand that they lied to us from day one. You coming home to ask your mother, grand, or your grandmother, or your or your great grandmother, or great grandfather, grandfather, same thing. Ask them. They not gonna know nothing about slavery. They never heard of that before. And the only people that's going to get mad at me for saying that is those that are like late 40s, 50s, 60s, <clears throat> maybe 70s, depending on what type of school they went to. Especially if they went to a quote unquote Ivy League school or some type of, listen, some type where like, for example, like, uh, What's that guy's name? A lot of them people that you see that went to the way I went to the best HBCU. But I'm not gonna get into that, baby. Don't get me. Don't. I'm not gonna go too far because there's a segment coming out on that. But anyway, um, yeah, a lot of those people of uh, they they they're against you. They're set to be a distraction. Hands down, every single one of them. Not just two or three. Every single one of them. And I got my doctrine at who cares? I was taught by the best in the so what? It's all indoctrination. And I keep telling y'all that them white folks got taught the exact same BS. Bad sociology. I proved that on my channel as well. So they in the they they in the unknown just like you are. <laughs> now it's all everybody going holding on to their beliefs for dear life. Well, I believe that that happened, Dane. So, but that's what I believe. Don't take that from me. <laughs> I'm not trying to take away your beliefs. I'm trying to tell you what you need to know. You can keep your beliefs. Let's run it. The legacy of slavery. Immigrants haven't even been in this country. But you see, most of us are either immigrants or are the descendants of immigrants. And well, we understand everybody. that we understand, not everybody, there are Native Americans there. But we understand in this country, we country. understand in this
people must understand why it is essential to disassociate themselves with politically correct words like, for example, black and white as their means of description when labeling themselves as a group of people by skin tone. Because in physics, the correspondence of color to a specific wavelength is called spectral color. Black and white in this sense are both absent of color because while black absorbs the light, white refracts it, meaning that they both do not carry specific wavelengths. Even though in the visual arts field, they are occasionally defined as colors, but only by common public opinion. So when the U.S. Census labels citizens as black or white as their classifications of race, it is not done so under a descriptive means by way of a person's physical skin hue. It strictly serves as a social construct, which is the meaning, notion, or connotation placed upon a specific group of people by an entire society and then later adopted by that same specific group of people with respect to how the other people of that entire society views or deals with that specific group of people. In other words, a social construct is a title or name that was given to our people by strangers and then eventually our people adopted it as their own. And that's a big no-no, because what if the government isn't responding to our demands for reparations and restitution only because we are agreeing to being labeled as something we are not, but that they want us to be? I mean, think about it. Doesn't that count as making yourselves non-existent when referring to yourself as black, since black can't be seen anyway? Since black can't be said, yo, I, I killed this. I hope y'all heard me. Since black can't be seen anyway, they ignoring you. Absent. Non-existent. So when you say black power, where is it? Where's the power? Huh? Where's black power? Where is it? Ever since Stokely Carmichael created that in 1964, where, where is that power? It's non-existent. Wake up! Wake up! This is the reason why we have to eliminate those terms because those are negative affirmations. Just like shout out Lord Jamal, when Lord Jamal pointed out that our people need to stop saying, I can't breathe, I can't, and all that stuff, those negative affirmations, that was powerful. And I bet y'all didn't even listen. Y'all still up there marching and singing that stupid, dude. listen. And, and all, mm, mm, mm. They praying off of your demise. Praying. Not on their hands and holding, I mean, not on their knees and holding up their hands praying. You know what type of praying I'm talking about. You want the changes to happen. We gotta make it happen for ourselves. I get deeper too. Watch this. I get watch. But what we can see is thousands of our people complaining about a white privilege that particular people are in fact receiving from the government. And we didn't think about calling ourselves. Oh, that's the Easter egg. Oh, can they see it? Uh, I hope y'all can see that. I hope y'all can see this. Can y'all see this? 
not not seminal freedmen, not seminal slaves, not se hello, God, hello, hello. I hope y'all can see that. I be dropping them Easter eggs in my videos left and right. who we really are as the fix to this discrimination yet would you believe that there are foreigners from other places of the world regardless of their skin complexions gaining this white status or white privilege immediately upon arriving here in America as undocumented immigrants and that's before they even become legalized US citizens and then labeled as white on the US census like, did you ever wonder when did the Caucasian race become legalized first class citizens of America? Since they too carry a history of immigrating to America as foreigners from other places of the world? That's a very good question. Ooh, that's a very good question. Did you ever wonder when did the Caucasian race become legalized first-class citizens of America since they too have a history of immigrating to America as foreigners from other places of the world. When did that, when did that happen, y'all? <laughs> Give me the year. Give me the year. When did they become first-class citizens? This is how you know this government is not as old as you think it is. This is how you gonna know. Nah, not 1666. Nope. Nope, not 1776. Come on up. <laughs> Come on up. Come up some more. Come on up. 1776. This, uh, this is brand new, y'all. Brand new. Keep in mind, it wasn't about race. It was about class. They're still classifying. Listen. Listen, if the census started classifying people into groups or classes in 1790, <laughs> then when did the whites or Caucasians Ever become legalized first class citizens. I'm gonna wait till I see the I, I'm looking. I'm looking. No, not 1790. Keep coming up. Mm -mm, nothing. In, I'm gonna tell you right now, not in the 1700s at all. When somebody said 2022. Uh-uh. 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 Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Did that person see? Hold on, hold on. Let me see. Let me see. Nah, yeah, somebody... Y'all close. Somebody close. Somebody is super close. All right, yeah. Somebody shout out the 14th Amendment. Uh, you getting close. Is that Ronald? You getting close, Ronald. You're hot. Matter of fact, you hot. If we was playing the game of hot and cold. Nah, not 1790 at all. Not, look, listen, not the 1700s at all. Or before. All before. That's all out. That's all out. Keep in mind, okay, the reason why is because the government, this government right here, this foreign government, didn't start kicking tail until they recreated their own constitution. Uh-oh. Until they recreated their own constitution. Uh-oh. 
What year was that? What year was that? Put it in there. Put it in there. <laughs> it was two constitutions. When was the second one? Why they had to redo it? Oh my God, hold on. That's giving them, wait a minute, let's. What they take out? They took out, listen. The 13th Amendment originally had 20 sections, right? Oh, did y'all know that? And they took them down and they took them all out and broke it down to three sections. Uh-oh. When did that other constitution get? It is, there it is. <laughs> there it is. They wrote it in themselves in their constitution. Their second constitution. The act of 1871. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. And look, in this right, look, I'm talking about this so simple. You know, I don't like telling you to go Google something, but you can probably pull this up on Google. They not hiding nothing, y'all. They don't care because our people not paying attention. Once again, they're banking off of your ignorance. Watch. Okay. As foreigners from other places of the world, and as more immigrants arrived here in America, the government continued to assist those newcomers. Ooh, look at that picture. Direct from the slums of Europe. Daily. Look at that picture. By modifying their pre-existing immigration laws. This is called immigration reform, which is merely a change to the current immigration policy of a country, city, or state by granting easier pathways for foreigners to become U.S. citizens. Like by way of payment, for example, when some presidents will drop the cost down or raise the cost up for illegal immigrants to become legal citizens. Another example is during the Bush and Obama administrations, legislation was crafted that tightened up border security, but also proposed a way for people who did not have legal status to earn legal permanent residency which an immigrant must have before trying to become a citizen. That tightened up. That's important. They had to earn it. They had to earn it, y'all. What that sound like to you? Sound like a form of slavery? Or a modified version? Mm-hmm. Think they had to earn it. What did they they had to work? Straight up, they had to work. Indenture means contract. Anytime you hear indenture and servant, that's uh, that's that's a form of employment. Indenture means contract. When you're filling out your application for a job right now. Listen, y'all, you're filling out a contract. The reason why you know that is because you could be fired at will. You're an at will employee earning, listen, wages. It's employment, y'all. When I tell you that slavery didn't exist the way they told us, that's what I'm referring to. It wasn't about chains and shackles. It was about working employment. It's still happening. Remember, hold on. Matter of fact, I want to point this out to you right now because y'all pointed out 1871 with that second constitution. That was excellent, right? When was slavery abolished? Now they gonna say 1863, 1865. So why did they have to hurry up and come up with another constitution? Hold up. Wait a minute. 
Because when slavery was abolished, allegedly, why did they have to change the rules? Let me see if somebody going to get it before I say it. Why did they have to change the rules? They hurried up and did it. 1863, 1865 is when slavery was allegedly abolished by this government. And then, then this government hurried up 1871, made themselves first class. You know how you first class in the plane? And everybody else in a different seating area, look at it that way. How to like how they structured uh uh the bus that Rosa Parks was boycotting on. The so-called colors had to sit in the back. Why do we have to desegregate when they was promoting segregation? Oh no, I'm going too far. I'm going too far. Ignore that I said that. Just come back up. I know I jumped. I didn't mean to jump right there. Stay on what I just said as far as the class is concerned. Because I want you to pinpoint that timeline. 1863, 1865, and then jump to 1871. What was, yes, Jim Crow was going on at simultaneously. Homestead Acts was still going on also. I see you. Don't go to eight. No, nah, don't go to 1879. Don't come too far up. Come back. Stay in that area where they started promoting that first class citizenship. What happened? Okay, the Freeman Bureau, you getting hot. You getting hot. Classism was already in play. Classism, reconstruction, reconstruction. Thank you, thank you. Reconstruction. There it is. Huh? Listen, that's exactly when it happened. Remember, Woodrow Wilson and them ain't getting to office until the top of the 1900s. Remember, they start, okay, there it go. Reconstruction Act of 1869. They were, re they were revamping everything because guess who had control? Uh-oh. Think about it. If we had the lands, the banks, the farms, the... I'm going to say it again. If we had the lands, the banks, the farms, the jobs, the businesses, we had all of agriculture, they got to reconstruct. Oh, my God. They, they doing better than us. So, well, we got to reconstruct this so every foreigner can. Uh-oh. Am I going too fast? Because that's what happened. That's what happened. That's called the Great Reset. That's at the, look, and that's at the same time where they told y'all that you came from Africa. Franz Boaz was the first person that was hired from Minden, Germany to come over here and teach these foreigners Anthropology. They said that he is the grandfather of anthropology in America. And inside of his anthropology, uh, I mean, anthropology classes, he had a form of racial divide. He was promoting racism biologically. One of his students, you're familiar with, I just went over this. I always do. And when I repost my old ones, Melville Herskovics, don't tell me how to pronounce his last name. I'm getting it wrong because he's an enemy. <laughs> Melville Herskovics was a st well, one of his students. And so was W.E.B. W DeBose. And so was W.E.B. DeBose. I'm going to say it again. W.E.B. is a traitor. Booker T. Washington is a traitor. Traitor! 
You heard me. I ain't got no music playing either. This is the reason why our so-called Negro Wall Streets went down. I got the records. I got the records. Can't take that from me. I found out. They sent them two niggas in there to go be nosy. Remember, that was the same. Listen, y'all, listen to that timeline. That's the same time period that what? We were prospering. And that government was forced to do a reconstruction. And they sent them two informants in there. See? They went to every Negro, Negro Wall Street, by the way, not just in Tulsa. I told you the first one that was really excelling was in Durham. I traveled there and put it on screen. Dang, you just went to Virginia. <laughs> those, that's those that haven't been on my channel long enough. I know what's going on, and I'm trying to tell you. Once again, I'm going to go back to it. Now, now you understand. I, I hope you do. We got a lot of work to do. We got a lot of work to do. And some of them Jews, those so-called white Jews are the ones that y'all going to call uh, Kazarians. They had our back. I got records of that too. They knew what this government was up to. But them Jesuits, <laughs> I'm going to tell y'all, them Catholic, I'm going to tell you, the ones that gonna, that's going to follow by the quote, um, Puritan way of life, end quote, Google that, I dare you. Puritan way of life, Google it, I dare you. Those are your enemies, and they are all in the government. I've been putting it out. Ain't no if, ass, or bust about it. I told you to Google it because that's probably what you're going to do. <laughs> that's all you're going to do is use Google. Meanwhile, I'm getting these damn records. And this shit costs money. I'm telling you who it is. And I'm telling you what they did. No, look Zach, look Zach tell you about Dramatria. He already killing it. <laughs> if I tell you about it, they gonna take my channel. <laughs> I would go way too far. Border security, but also proposed a way for people who did not have legal status to earn legal permanent residency, which an immigrant must have before trying to become a citizen. Another example is comedian Michael Blackston publicly celebrating on social media that he officially became a U.S. citizen on November 24, 2021. The 48-year-old Ghana native posted a photo on Instagram to his 5 million followers, waving a small U.S. flag with the caption reading, quote, They finally made me an American citizen. Only foreigners will understand why I'm smiling and what we go through to get a green card or citizenship. He also posted his green card on his Twitter account, being sure to block out his classification of race from being shown, leaving the comment, Today, I'm turning this in back to the U.S. immigration. For those who don't know what this is, it's a green card. This is what every foreigner that comes to America would die for. Laugh out loud. Today, I'm turning it in for my citizenship. Can't wait to swear in so I can apply for welfare. Now, even though he may seem like he was joking right there, 
That's actually true in millions of cases for foreigners who are allowed to become citizens and are classified as white, which I just covered earlier in this segment. Now, what's very important to note here is that an August 2021 article written by Justice for Immigrants states that, quote, an estimated 10.5 million undocumented immigrants live in the United States and could be deported because of their lack of legal status. That number has declined since 2014. Approximately two thirds have lived in the United States for more than a decade. These individuals and their families participate in the workforce and contribute to their communities. Okay. Listen to this. Justice for immigrants, y'all. Listen. They've been here. Now, I mean, of course, they be, oh, well, we're going to deport you. We're going to deport But the only time they do it is when they're not working. But when they're working, okay. You, you're going to learn today. You're going to learn today. But wait a minute. So if the Border Patrol is there to prevent immigrants from illegally entering the United States, then are these 10.5 million immigrants an exception to the rules of this government? This just goes to show you that they are allowing them here and are in fact assisting them in more ways than just one. Why else would foreigners want to migrate from their mother country so badly and into this one without receiving some form of compensation for doing so? On the official website of the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, on the topic of immigration reform, she states, quote, Our nation's immigrants are the constant reinvigoration of America. Each wave of newcomers brings their patronism, bravery, and determination to succeed to our shores, and in doing so, makes America more American. As students and service members, entrepreneurs and public servants, parents and neighbors, these new Americans affirm our country's fundamental founding truth, that in diversity lies strength. We will never stop fighting to ensure that America remains a land of opportunity for those who work hard abide by our laws and dare to dream end quote these people are not seeking asylum or running from something or somebody or whatever story that your local and national news media station will create just to make the viewers feel guilty according to their actions historically the government's intention of allowing immigrants into this country is not that complicated a few reasons is about manipulating the U.S. Census numbers and recruiting useful foreigners into the U.S. military. For example, oh, 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 before I go into this, now this is deep. <clears throat> before I go into this, you guys got to understand that that's all this government is for. This government straight up, when they reconstructed it, they made, they set it up. For those that are seeking asylum to be com to, to come over here and they're going to receive compensation for doing so. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. So when a foreigner tries to decide that they care about what you're going through, you got to let them know what you're going through and what they're not trying to tell you what they're going through. Our fight is different. There's a difference between the two. These foreigners are coming over here not being labeled black or African-American. Straight up. They're not being labeled black or African-American. And that's the problem. Because they are not going through the same things that we're going through. Straight up. Even if they share the same hue. As soon as the officer pull that person over and ask for their ID and to say white, here go your ID, sir. Have you have a nice day? A 
as soon as that person, even if, like, once again, they can have the same hue and apply for a loan on a house, and as soon as they do that background and it pop up, race status is white, they're going to take a look. Their credit score higher. <laughs> they're getting paid more. Listen, y'all. This is not a game. And once again, this, I'm not, they got this. I'm not mad at y'all. Y'all did that for a reason, to take care of your families. Why would I be mad at you? I'm mad at my own people for not getting it. We don't got to fall for this capitalist society. When we created it, and we can take it back. Keep in mind, reconstruction happened. They reconstructed what we already had in place. I'm going to say it again. They reconstructed what we already had in place. We were the owners of it all. And now we begging for a handout? That's a slap in the face. So from this day forward, you can't tell me that Dane Calloway wrong. You can't tell me that. We ain't on the same level. We ain't on the same level of thinking. Don't compare me to none of these fools that's online that's lying. Especially if they still call him as black and African American when both social constructs are working against us. Still. And I know you hear me. Those of you that are foreigners that are cool with me and like my content, keep supporting it. But Dane Calloway gonna tell you to not only support it, but speak up. Tell the truth. It shouldn't just be me letting my people know the entire situation. Tell them that you are labeled as white. Tell them that your credit is higher. Your income is higher. They gonna look at you before they look at our own people. And it's not based off of the skin complexion. It's based off of the status that you hold. Tell the truth. That's what this is about. It's not about me name calling. I don't got to do that. Leave that to reading the sheet stuff over there. I don't got to name battle with you or go back and forth. For what? That makes us look bad as a whole. I, that causes division. I'm not for that. But if you for us, then you need to be for us. I'm going to tell you how it is. I'm not going to tell you how it might be. And that goes for all of y'all. If you got the ball, speak up. Don't bite your tongue. You know how to create videos just as well as I do. Everybody got cell phones. You can easily click record and upload it on YouTube. It doesn't matter if you're African, from Barat or uh, Hindustan. From, it doesn't matter where you're from. Like when, well, for this the reason why I respect, uh, uh, what's my brother's name that's with um, Lord Jamal, um, the comedian, um, Godfrey. When I came on Lord Jamal's podcast, Godfrey kept it 100. The, all, the entire time and told the truth. And he's Nigerian. 
And he said, we ain't never heard of that. <laughs> Straight up. And that was his reputation on the line. And still to this day, Godfrey's speaking up about the injustice that's happening to us. Still. Knowing that his situation is different. He spoke about both. That's the type of person I can respect. Not somebody that's going to be hiding. If you're going to hide, just stay hot. Just, <laughs> just stay over there. You in the way. You in the way. So once again, stop comparing me to these folks. I'm not them. They not me. I'm not here to belittle nobody. I'm just pointing out fraud and I'm going to call it out. Like I said, I'm going to call it like how I see it. Straight up. I'm for my people for real. You ain't going to find too many of me out here. Shut out the Papa Duck though. Shout out to Barbara Rossin. It's a, it's a, it's a few. Shout out to Sister Becky. Shout out to all of y'all that's watching in the chat right now. We think, listen. 5200 watching, listen. Y'all know what's up. Let's go. Rest in peace, granddaddy. I love you. I'm about to get up out of here, y'all. I love y'all. I was going to play. We, we're going. No, we'll come back to this. We'll come back. I love y'all. Just hit the subscribe button. We'll be back. I'm Dane Calloway, and you know I'm just here to make you think.